All right, risk tolerance. Typically, a financial advisor will ask you to fill out a questionnaire to help determine your risk uh, profile. And from that questionnaire, they'll create a strategy for a proper investment allocation for your portfolio. And this is kind of like the old way, I would say, of figuring out your risk tolerance. Because I feel people don't understand how much risk is really involved. And because of that, we have a different approach. Um, I have seen clients in circumstances where uh, they're very much against taking any risk with their investments because they fear they'll lose their entire portfolio. But they need to take risk because they could benefit, even with a little bit of volatility, from achieving their goals and dreams by taking a little bit more risk. And I've seen the opposite, where clients are willing to take on too much volatility, too much downside risk, and jeopardize a retirement that they already have uh, cemented. And we help clients uh, determine where a good balancing point is between your different risk needs and goals. And there are three types of constructs that we look at. So there's the emotional tolerance for risk, there's the financial goals, needs uh, for risk, and the perception of risk. So let's dive into each one of these briefly. Emotional tolerance for risk will measure how someone feels about taking risks. You know, I feel like I'm a conservative investor, or moderate, or aggressive. But simply put, when we look at it, we just look at the downside exposure. So we often ask clients, how much can you afford to lose before you become nervous? The second area is financial goals risk. And, and here what we're measuring is by uh, looking at their financial goals and how much they've saved up, we can determine how much risk they need to take on or what is the minimum amount of risk that they need to take on. And the third area is perception of risk. Uh, this is uh, what is the risk now, right? And this is how we perceive it. And people can be greatly influenced by what's happening today. Sometimes they uh, someone can decide to take on more risk because of recent growth or recent gains in their portfolio. Or take no risk when we're at towards the bottom of the cycle because of all the losses that they've faced. So you can see with, uh, with, some, with a low emotional risk score and a high financial goal risk score, I get the risk scores are different, um, that you would have to make decisions, financial decisions. And knowing that may help guide some of the financial decisions. So here, you would either have to increase your ability to take risk to meet what your financial goals are, or you need to decrease your financial goals to meet where you feel comfortable with investments. You know, once we dial this risk, this part of the risk score, if you will, into your financial plan, this will influence cash flow, liquidity needs, tax strategies, um, investment portfolio recommendations, as well as estate planning and, and everything else. And so, again, if you're not working with an advisor that's integrating your investments with your taxes and estate planning, please reach out to us. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.